out, Nostalgia Ween, with another bad sequel. You all know the film The Exorcist. Creepy girl gets possessed, and two priests have to exorcise her through prayer and... <laughs> ...beating the shit out of her. Well, four years later, John Borman took the directing chair to bring us the sequel, Exorcist 2, The Heretic. And just like the first film, where people had to be rushed to the hospital because of scariness, people had to be rushed to the coffee shop to wake the fuck up. <laughs> this is certainly one of the strangest sequels to ever be constructed. It has a lot of scary ideas, but no real scary scenes. Its concepts are fascinating, but its delivery is downright silly. It has the original star, but it's directed by the same guy who pushed on Connery and Orange later on. You can see where problems might arise. So, let's see if the power of Christ can compel this film. This is Exorcist 2. So it opens with Richard Burton playing a priest who's been called out to exorcise a girl they say might be possessed. The funny thing is, this is just how they get Sarah Silverman to go to church. But she breaks loose and decides to turn up the heat. She takes on the form of Jim Carrey, and then we cut to her stunt dummy being burned alive. We then cut to Reagan, the possessed girl from the first film in... Stanley Kubrick's daycare center where she undergoes counseling sessions from Nurse Ratchet. Those bad dreams are still inside you. There's nothing wrong with me. Lots of girls walk backwards down the stairs on all fours. We then cut to Richard Burton, who discusses the uneasiness of examining the death of Father Marin, four years after his death, but better late than Satan. Some, and they are close to the pontiff, go so far as to suggest that he was a Satanist. At the end, I mean. Perhaps Father Marin led us astray. Perhaps he took a path that no one could follow. Christ is hard to follow, too. We were young. Today, wherever I look, I see only evil. God has fallen silent. Well, yeah, that's what most Catholics think, but you're not supposed to say it. You will conduct the investigation. So he begins his investigation with Reagan, as he asks questions about her to Nurse Ratchet. I can't let you question her. You have a heavy responsibility. The care of her soul. The care of her mind and her body is my responsibility, Father. You realize what you're up against, don't you? What am I up against, Father? Evil. Evil is a spiritual being. Alive and living. Well, I'm sure a woman who plainly showed that she's a person of science and fact would love to go up against... <laughs> evil! The shock of recall could result in self-punishment. But she does allow him to watch a new psychological experiment tested on her. Listen to this. The device, or seizure machine as I like to call it, puts both the subject and the doctor into a deep hypnotic state. This somehow allows the doctor to go inside her mind and see what she's seeing. Okay, maybe in a sci-fi film this would be interesting, you know, sort of this new technology that doesn't exist. But in a horror film, especially one that was so grounded in reality as Exorcist, this seems really out of place. You think the first film would have worked better with sci-fi technology? I cast you out! Fuck him! Be gone! Fuck him, Garrus! From this him. creature of God! Fuck him! Very well, set phases to crisp. Now, Reagan, I want to come down and be with you. So Reagan allows Nurse Ratchet into her mind, but it seems like what she's seeing is too frightening for her heart to take. So Reagan breaks the connection, which should probably snap the other woman out of it, but whatever, I didn't make it. So the priest goes in to try and save her. I know where she is. Help me to find her. Yeah, the priest, who has never seen this thing before and has no idea how it works. Why doesn't the assistant go in, or somebody else who knows what they're doing but is surprisingly absent? I'm so glad her mental health is so important to you, lady. That must be why nobody else in the building knows what to do if something goes wrong. Protection, top priority! Relax deeply, watch the light. Yes, just relax or she'll die! So Burton sees the image of the exorcism going on while Reagan's doing the mind meld with her goodies. Father, please bring her back! Um... This was before the jail exploitation films, right?
God's name. <laughs> but the priest does manage to save her and get her back to normal. However, another problem occurs when Burton sees the drawing that Reagan just did. We've got to put the fire out. Take it easy. It's probably some post-flashing. It's an after-effect of the hypnosis. No, 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 no. No, you've got to help me. We may be too late. We may be too late. Boy, nice shifty eye acting there, Burton. What, was Borman holding a laser pen to direct you? No, 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 no. No, you've got to help me. We may be too late. We may be too late. So, of course, he has to search the entire building for it, or just check the floor he's conveniently on. Huh, the devil must have changed the direction of the smoke. Oh. So Burton does pretty much every wrong thing you can do with a fire, thinking he can in fact beat it into submission, and thereby spreading it even further than it already was. <laughs> should be amazed that Reagan's picture matches reality, but I'm just shocked that he spread the fire so far that it actually reached several feet behind him! Good God! Someone take away his junior fireman badge! The work you're doing is incredible, miraculous. The machine is simply a device to penetrate pathological No, states. you're talking about therapy. You're talking about therapy. You don't realize the enormous importance of your work. As much as I enjoy a little recognition, you're really That's overstating not true. it. <laughs> yeah, it's like reading a person's mind is some sort of big deal. So Reagan starts having dreams about a little boy in Africa who's fighting off locusts while something possesses her to climb out on the edge. Fun fact here, this is not an effect. Apparently John Borman actually put Linda Blair on the ledge with no means of catching her. How would you like to be the guy she landed on if she falls? Hey, isn't that Linda Blair? No, I think that's Tatum O'Neill. Nah, nah, look closer. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. Hey, Miss Blair, can I have your autograph? But Reagan's caretaker comes in to make sure she's all right. Oh, good morning, Sharon. That woman, by the way, is one of the assistants from the first movie, who will serve as Reagan's not mother for the rest of the film. She does permit her to play mental flashlight tag again, though, because Lord knows it worked so damn well the first time. Reagan, do you remember dreaming of Father Marin? Yes. Can you see him now? Yes. Oh, by the way, did I mention that these scenes are ungodly slow and boring? But don't worry, though. We still have three more like them to sit through. Reagan. Boy, Epcot's Africa isn't as glamorous as I thought it would be. I have maggots in my scrotum. We see the boy Reagan dreamt about before was actually a healer and that the demon tried to possess him in order to destroy such goodness. I am Zuzu. Okay, you sound more like Eartha Kitt from The Emperor's New Groove, but whatever, I'll still try to be scared of you. Pazuzu. Pazuzu. And this brings us to one of the biggest problems of the film. The name Pazuzu is not scary! It sounds silly! Very, very silly! And yet, they constantly repeat his name over and over again. Pazuzu. 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 Doesn't it sort of suck out the fear when your villain is named something so goofy? Quickly, Papa! We must get the holy water and destroy Squishy Puppy! What? Squishy Puppy! Oh, that sounds adorable. No, he's not! He's a horrible demon that eats children's brains! Look! Yeah, but when you put the name Squishy Puppy under him, he seems so much cuter. No, he doesn't! He's a... Oh, you're right. Look at that. We should adopt one of those. <laughs> so as you can hear, Pazuzu's not a very good karaoke singer, but he is good at possessing little boys and knocking extras off a mountain. So it seems at the top of the mountain is a holy church. Might want to switch locations there, guys. Where Father Marin jump cuts the boy to health. But Marin saved him. Never. I could claim Fakumu even now. I'll show you power. He's still alive. 
Where is he? You want me to take you to him? Yes. What the hell was that? I mean, geez, could that intro be any more silly? That could be the new logo for the MGM Lion. So Burton realizes he has to prepare to travel to Africa to find the exercise boy who grew up into the man named Kakuma, which gives Reagan much more time to interact with the kids at the center. I'm autistic. I can't talk. But you're talking now. Yes, you are. I can hear you. What's the matter with you? was possessed by a demon. What? Oh, it's okay. He's gone. Oh, that's okay then. No, actually, I think I'm gonna go back to my first reaction. What? God, who wrote that line? That was awful! Why would you admit that so casually to a stranger? And a little kid, no less! She'd be scared shitless! So, what's wrong with you? I was possessed by a demon. Oh, it's okay. He's gone. So it turns out Reagan brought the child speech back with her sporadic psychic powers that she suddenly possesses, which doesn't make Nurse Ratchet the least bit happy. Do you think I could start helping some of your other kids? You know, Reagan, it's really very dangerous to fool around with other people's heads. Please don't try anything like that again. Yes, just disregard the magical telepathic child and the incredible machine that can read minds! Good God, this woman could downplay a healing chihuahua if she could! But Reagan wants to find out more about her abilities and talks with Burton in a museum. Do priests believe in ESP? Some do. In fact, a French priest tired of shut down, thought that we'd all come together eventually in some sort of mental telepathy. Well, that's fascinating. A kind of world mind. Uh-huh. In which everybody would share. Interesting. Father Merrin himself believed that with modern scientific research it could happen quite soon. Intriguing theory. But if it happens before we're ready. Uh-huh we may find ourselves pointing in the wrong direction. Uh-huh. Towards Satan. What the fuck? For God's sakes, you don't have to work everything back to the devil! Just let a theory be a theory! Two plus two equals four. Which could possibly be Satan! So Burton finally travels to Africa, comes across that ridiculously hard-to-reach church, prays to South Park Jesus, and even manages to point them to the lost body of where that one servant fell years ago. How did he know the body was here? He's killed by Bazuzu, a very powerful demon. Bazuzu? Bazuzu? Funny, it looks pretty close to civilization there, and yet nobody ever looked behind that one rock. Did they never smell him at all? Did they think it was just bad African cooking? I'm uh, a little confused. You will not speak to a devil worshiper! I'm not a devil worshiper! How dare you solve one of our great mysteries, American Satan! So he calls on the help of a two-minute Ned Beatty cameo to fly him around to see if he can find Kokumo. Aw, oh, what a beautiful sunset. In that it's literally a sun on a set. I don't know who they're fooling with that. Help me. So Britton communicates with Reagan, again with those handy out-of-nowhere psychic powers, and she leads him to Kokumo's location, which coincidentally is only three steps away from him. Boy, when it comes to fires or African boys that were possessed by the devil, he always seems to be in the right location. I call upon you in the name of Father Lancaster Merrin. So we see Kakumo, played by James Earl Jones with a locust muppet on his head, as he tells Burton that if he wants to speak to him, he must test his faith. So he spits a tomato onto the spikes. Makes sense to me, I don't know what your problem is. And Burton tries to make it across. Can I help you? I fail. My name is Kokumo. Did you ever know a Father Lancaster Marin? Let me guess, we're just totally going to ignore the fact that he fell on top of a bunch of spikes and James Earl Jones was dressed like the kindergarten production of District 9. Yes. That's what I thought. You know, this film raises so many questions that nobody drunk or sober would ever want to answer. The brushing of the wings changes their personality. They become a destructive, voracious, marauding swarm. 
So he traveled all this way just to discover what he could in a National Geographic, as Reagan decides to run away and try to find him in order to continue their psychic link. And wouldn't you know it, they happen to meet up. Not only Kukuo, but others like him began to appear in the world. Satan has sent Bazuzu to destroy this goodness. Philip, you must take my place. She is precious, and I entrust her to you. So the spirit of Marin is in Reagan, I think, but they need to stop Pazuzu, who is also in Reagan, I think. You know, I'm sorry, didn't we spend a whole goddamn movie trying to get the spirit out of her? How the hell did she end up with two? Two fucking spirits! That's the exact opposite of what you were supposed to do! Instead of taking one out, you put another one in! I think you deserve your money from the collection plate back! So Burton feels all the answers are at the original house where the first exorcism took place. Ratchet and the caretaker find out about this and get a cab to drive them there as well. There, Burton discovers that the room is... You know... If you like locusts and really slow, blinking lights, this movie is probably a godsend to you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure after a car gets totaled by smashing to a brick wall and a metal gate, I'd walk out with just a scratch on my head, too! Sharon, I've got to get inside. Let me inside! In answer to your question, I have no idea why she did that. Maybe the idea is she's being possessed too, or maybe she just cracked at some point? I don't know. What I do know is what's going on inside. Oh, wait, no, I don't. He's chosen me. Pazuzu's Reagan is the only Reagan. <sighs> so I guess there's somehow two physical Reagans now? The Pazuzu one, who's looking an awful lot like Dwight from The Office, and the good one, who for some reason is having a hard time stopping Burton from acting like a perverted pedophile. Pazuzu's more weird than he is scary. You must tear out her evil heart. So, I'll give you one guess as to what's coming up next. Either, I swear to God here, more locusts or more blinking lights. Well, seeing how we just encountered the locusts a few seconds ago, I think this calls for even more goddamn locusts. Maybe this climax would be more fitting if you were fighting Gozer, but for an exorcist movie, this is pretty overdone. So Burton literally punches his way to her heart. Insert Kalima or fatality joke here. While the good Reagan tries to figure out how to stop the locusts. It's... I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what this is. Somehow she's defeating the locust like the little boy with the slingshot, despite the fact that she has no slingshot, yet she can dissolve them away. I hear the credits on the way, so I'm just gonna skip over this. An enemy of the human race... is subdued. That is until Exorcist 3, which will somehow involve George C. Scott. I understand now. The world won't. So, only now do the people come out to look at the damage. I guess the car crash, constant screaming, and house demolished by locusts didn't wake them up. Heavy sleepers. As Burton and Reagan walk into the sunset to live from a world that will never understand them. Much like how people walked away from this movie because we will never understand it. While it has some neat ideas, the execution of this film is really goofy. 
For an Exorcist sequel, it's pretty piss poor. Especially when you take into account, it's never scary. Oh, I don't mean like they try to scare you and it fails. I mean, literally, they never even made an effort. There's no jump scares or scary imagery or anything like that. It's really weird that way. Well, it's nowhere close to one of the worst sequels I've ever seen, it's still pretty bad. And should only be brought out if you have a locust fetish or enjoy torturing your retinas. Hey, I know that .0001% is out there somewhere, and I think he directed this fucker. Now I'm a nostalgia critic, and I want to be sure I never go through nostalgia ween again, and I'm willing to go through any ridiculous lengths to make that happen. God, I think it worked. I think I never have to do Nostalgia Ween again. Huh. Oh my god, this is incredible! Oh, oh thank you, great spirits! Is there anything I can do to repay you? Possessed by a demon.